welcome to my channel on numerical methods in civil engineering like share subscribe press bell button for latest update let me start in the regular classes uh, we have covered uh, till second unit actually so um, that is uh, unit one we have completed unit two we have completed actually uh, we were doing um, uh, the Newton Raphson method problem, application problems, application application problems also we have completed. Uh, uh, okay, and some of the problems I wanted to do, but um, anyhow, uh, there was a problem and we have stopped. So those problems I'll continue in some other class. So let us start with uh, unit three. That's application of nu numerical integration for solving simple beams, um, beam problems. And uh, so, Actually, this is the one, okay? Uh, so here, this unit. And the numerical integration, we'll be doing it by uh, trapezoidal rule and, rule and the Simpson's one-third rule, okay? And uh, we will be having only the uh, application for uh, calculating the areas of BMD diagrams drawn for uh, statically determined beams uh, only, okay? So, uh, you know, first we have to know what is this uh, numerical integration and why this numerical integration is required. So all of you know uh, numerical, in I mean, integration, right? Answer, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So integration is nothing but, you know, summing up the things, right? Summing up the things. And uh, uh, so in order to, uh, differentiation means splitting up the things and uh, integration means it summing up the things. Uh, usually we can, even in the case of bending moment, drawing the bending moment diagram, uh, for, you know, calculating the area also, we can use a uh, integration method, method that is definite integrals. You can do uh, be between the limits, you can calculate the areas. But let me tell you wh why, what is the importance of this uh, numerical integration is. Okay, now let us take some examples of civil engineering. So let us take some uh, three examples in civil engineering. Okay, and here there is a some layout. Okay, our uh, area where there is a natural river uh, flowing, and these are the some uh, plots. I mean um, uh, sites. Okay, and these are the two roads. Uh, it is uh, very. Uh, it's important to find out for a server. Uh, I mean surveyor. Uh, to calculate the areas of this uh, plot area, okay? And in such situations, uh, you know, the surveyor, what he actually do, does is he, he will uh, get all the points of this and he will do the survey. But for finding the area, it will be very difficult to do it because if it is a rectangle, uh, you could, uh, you know, anybody can uh, do the, uh, you know, calculation, okay? But if it is, um, you know, um this irregular area like this okay so this is the area where we need which uh, you have to calculate the uh, area and it is very irregular if it is a rectangle or something else we could have calculated very easily you know l into d um, or if it's a circle you can do uh, you know pi r square by uh, or pi r square or pi d square by 4 or something like that so it's now a complicated problem, okay? This is one problem. Uh, the other problem is, let us consider another one. So there is a river which is flowing, okay? So uh, water, resource, water resource engineer or hydro, hydrologist uh, is, will have a task of finding out the cross-sectional area of that river, okay? So this is the, um, you know, the profile of the cross-section of the river. So we need to find out the area of this, okay? So that is one one kind of uh, problem which is there, which will be there in our uh, civil engineering. Uh, okay. So another problem, a structural engineer will encounter, uh, you know, uh, in the case of analysis and design of tall structures. So where uh, the wind will be blowing, and uh, as the height increases, the wind pressure also will increase like this. Okay, and it will be very very irregular, isn't it? Yes sir, no. Yes sir. Isn't it? So. It's our task. It's very difficult to find out uh, these, uh, you know, I, it's required to find out the total force. Okay. So here so, uh, the structural engineer should find out uh, the total force, which is acting on the structure and the position of it also sometimes. Okay. 
how do you determine how do you calculate anybody these are the three problems how do you calculate um, this total area okay from uh, here to here and this area as well as uh, how do you calculate this force anybody aman aman he can't talk aman are you connected with audio yeah yeah so what is the solution for finding the force i mean uh, area of these uh, i mean problems double integration double integration or just integration okay uh, double integration you can do that is uh, let's say for example uh, you know this is having uh, two shapes so this limits this side one limit you can consider this side one limits you can consider this is this uh, you can consider as x and this you can consider as y isn't it so as you are rightly telling double integration is the one which you can easily find out between uh, you can put the limits okay you will have x and y values okay that that is fine but uh, now how do you know exactly so because if you wanted to do the double integration you must have an equation right how do you obtain this equation who will give you the equation surveyor will only get the uh, points of this okay the x y coordinates of this how do you go obtain the uh, uh, the equation for this isn't it you need to have an equation right between yes sir sir can we uh, separate this here into some rectangle triangle trapezoid and calculate its area sir yes you are right that is what uh, your our uh, numerical integration will be but actually by regular integration by regular integration how do you do so has the uh, you know aman he is rightly told uh, he can, you can find out uh, you know uh, the area by double integration method but thing is getting the equation is very difficult how do you get this equation any any clue anybody lata shree sir no idea you can just say no clue no clue sir no, no clue sir. right so now let me just explain give you an example okay so instead of this i'll take up this example okay uh, uh, which is a river cross section okay and uh, let me show you how to get this equation okay that's by direct integration okay that is for direct integration but uh, you know that we will not be doing here okay so actually speaking so what we can do is now let us assume uh, let us take this uh, cross section let us assume the coordinates of these as 3 meter 5 meter 4.5 meter 4 meter 4.5 6 7 5.5 and 2 meters okay and these coordinates we have taken at regular intervals of 1 1 1 1 1 meters right are you able to figure it out all of you yes window yes. hello hello yes sir uh, hello to figure it out right these are the coordinates we are assuming okay some coordinates yes sir 1 meter 3 i mean so y coordinates are 3 5 4.5 i'm just assuming this cross section okay so there is a uh, you know uh, river of total width top width of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 meter top width and uh, maximum depth of the river is 7 meter so that i have divided into simple areas i mean i have calculated the ordinates okay so these are the actually so i've just used uh, excel program okay and i've plotted the profile of the uh, the river now let me just uh, uh, you know by using uh, this kind of uh, software somehow you can able to get uh, this equation and then i'll just show you how to uh, you know get this equation very simply with uh, very minimal time i'll just uh, you know explain um okay are you able to see the excel screen all of you in yes sir yes sir yes yes yeah so now you can see here so these are the xy coordinates i have just put and uh, you know for simplicity what i have done is because uh, uh, this is the uh, reference we are taking from there we we'll have to i have just plotted the y values you know uh, negative values so some of that, that by by which we can get exact profile but but for our convenience what i have done is i have just uh, you know 
um, you know, ma made it into uh, uh, you know these ordinates into plus. Okay, so for convenience to put uh, you know the values as plus values. So in uh, MS Excel, what you can do? So you can just uh, insert. You can select all the uh, coordinates and you can insert. Right click and uh, insert the. Uh, uh, chart. chart okay go to insert and <coughs> you can click here and uh, you can just put it like this so you'll get a plot i mean you can get you'll get a curve so in this excel what you should do is um we need to just right click and um uh, just click add trend line okay you need to click add trend line so it will show you in the beginning is a straight line so what you can do you just put a polynomial and you just go on giving the or increasing the uh order of uh, polynomial so by selecting uh, order uh, 6 uh, we can able to get approximately the same uh, profile are you able to see everyone hello yes sir yes yeah. sir so this is the trend line by which you can get uh, the, uh, you know the curve okay so now what you can do is and that uh, there is an option to click i mean display the equation okay Uh, so you can just click here and uh, you can see the equation are you able to see everyone yeah yes, yes sir. sir so um what you can do this is the y equation and using this y equation uh, you can actually do the integration okay so now i'll stop here i'll go back to the presentation okay uh, let me go back to the presentation So we were here. So we can use this equation. X6 means x to the power 6. 0 0.04 x to the power of 5. Just like that. And uh, using these values, once again, what you can do is you can get uh, these y values as well. W by just putting the value of x is equal to 1, you will be able to get uh, y values equal to 3. Uh, I had actually done that there, uh, I, you know, because now I have closed. Let me not. Uh, I'll just open later. Okay. So now, similarly. Uh, now, by direct numerical numerical, I mean uh, integration method, what you should do is this is an irregular area, okay? Instead of double integration method, because you know this is uh, the x value is not varying, uh, okay, uh, irregularly, right? So what I'll do, I the value uh, y value is also I, y values are only the one which are varying, okay? The x values actually they are uh, you know varying linearly. So what I'll do by regular integration, uh, it can I mean what you can do you can find out the area is equal to 0 to 10 and y into dx so if let us you know what that you can do it by considering a small elemental area like this with uh, thickness equal to dx at a distance uh, x from the origin and if the y is the total ordinate you can find out the area by this method uh, isn't it not is it not can you find the uh, area uh, by this method or not yes yes sir. you can do it right because y into dx dx small elemental area d area will be y into dx so if you integrate between the limits 0 to 10 you can get it okay and uh, here the thing is difficult part was uh, finding the equation for y so somehow we did it okay somehow we did it and uh, uh, we could able to get the equation for that and uh, we can substitute the values of um, i mean uh, yeah so you can different i mean integrate it but the x to the power 6, x to the power 5. This equation is very complex. And also, sometimes you will not be able to predict exactly the values of uh, y, okay, if the if the variation is very, uh, very lot of variation if it is there. Now, I'll show you in the Excel itself, okay. Uh, what actually happens uh, in the Excel program, I mean, uh, in the uh, numerical, I mean, by predicting the equation, I can actually able to predict uh, uh, so up to you can see here up to uh, at one meter I can able to predict uh, the value of three okay three was I, I should able to I mean actually I should be getting three but now I have got uh, 3.11 okay if I put two x is equal to two I should get five but I could be able to get 4.8 and it continues up to uh, you know up to five meter I can able to find out approximately the value okay you can see 4.5 instead of that I have got Five. But after six, uh, 
it's not getting the value you are not able to get uh, get the value of y so it is very difficult uh, to predict uh, exact equation even with this kind of uh, you know high end softwares as also so it by, that is the limitation of regular integration okay you understood right all of you predicting the equation is one thing okay and then integrating that equation okay which is very very complex okay and uh, that you cannot do it uh, very easily and uh, which it requires a lot of time and a lot of effort and all so to simplify that one so what you can uh, what we can do is we can use make use of uh, this numerical integration uh, we should uh, find uh, the area of so there were there is a <clears throat> curve which will be given you need to find out the area below that curve okay uh, taking this th this to as a reference so as i was telling so this is the remens uh, uh, method some some method so you can do it by three methods one is dividing the rectangles like this but considering the left point as the uh, the height of the uh, rectangle okay for every rectangle the left point will be the height similarly here the left point will be the height okay this is one method the other method is you can consider right point of the tri rectangle as the height of the rectangle so over here and the other method third method is you can consider the midpoint of the rectangle as the height of the rectangle now you should tell me which one will give you accurate answer midpoint midpoint mid so because the first method uh, you will be underestimating the area because you are neglecting this uh, triangular portions right okay so you will not be you will be getting lesser area whereas here you will be getting more area isn't it uh, whereas here it will be balanced that side and this side it will be balanced there may be some error but it will not be much okay so this is the remens method some method there is another method which is called i mean a trapezoid method so the same area you can split into okay different trapezoidals actually speaking this will give you almost a near answer okay you just uh, you know split uh, this into number of um, uh, the trapezoids okay this is one trapezoid okay this is another trapezoid just like this you have n number of you will be having n number of uh, trapezoids okay so which can be which you can uh, split like this okay so here uh, you can see in the screen so if uh, if there is some curve which is given you idealize that into one straight line okay and that will form a trapezoid similarly you can because you know the accuracy depends upon the number of uh, trapezoids you can you consider okay let us say for example if you are, there is a curve like this that you can split into uh, number of uh, trapezoidals uh, trapezoids like this okay and uh, so the accuracy of the results depends upon the number of uh, you know intervals you consider are you able to see the animation everyone yes sir yes, yes sir i think it will be some lagging will be there because you know that depends upon the internet speed see here so actually I, it started from two i mean one uh, ordinate isn't it i mean one interval and uh, it has multiplying it is multiplying into number of intervals so the prediction of that uh, accuracy of that curve you will be getting uh, if you you know by considering more and more intervals okay i think we are get we are having only one minute or uh, actually i started at 36 uh, um, 9:36 okay maybe uh, seven more minutes i have okay i will uh, complete uh, i mean simpson's rules also, rule also okay introduction i mean just uh, i'll mention simpson's rule and we will stop the class later we will continue okay so are you able to see the screen so accuracy depends upon the number of intervals okay this is how you can uh, split uh, irregular area into number of uh, uh, trapezoids okay so fairly uh, you will be getting um, the accurate uh, result in this trapezoid method okay but uh, sometimes there will be uh, you know i mean you will not be getting uh, correct answers because you know if the uh, you can see here if uh, if the curve is very steep so there will be some uh, uh, you know uh, error or you will be uh, you know leaving behind some areas okay so which we cannot uh, count using trapezoid method so in order to take care of that as well in such case of uh, you know sharp curves we can make use of the um, you know simpson's rules rule actually 
So what is the Simpson's rule? Simpson's rule is nothing but uh, uh, we will be idealizing um, given um, you know uh, curve. So this is the given curve. Okay. So this is the given curve. And what we can do, we can um, you know uh, predict the equation for the, this with a uh, you know polynomial. Okay. That's nothing but quadratic equation. So you'll be having one, two, three points. And if you uh, plot these three points, you'll be getting a, a, a plot like this. And if you, uh, that is what we did now in Excel. So similarly, if you can able to predict an equation, so that will give you a quadratic equation. And using that quadratic equation, uh, we could be able to uh, find out uh, the ordinates. And here, what we need to do is, we'll have to split the given areas into uh, areas like this, okay? So you need to have, uh, three ordinates one two three ordinates and you'll be joining that by a quadratic parabola okay so that's actually uh, you know parabola equation okay and uh, uh, that way you will be finding out uh, areas of um, you know one two three four five areas you will be having so just like this so one two three and this will be another uh, area okay so there will be five areas, one, two, three, four, five areas will be there and just summing them up will give you the uh, accurate answer. So in this method, the advantage of the Simpson's rule is we'll be uh, eliminating uh, the error due to straight line also. Okay, clear? Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, press bell button for latest updates.